All right, so for this video, I want to talk about just the basics of aerodynamic forces for airplanes and rockets. A lot of the terminology is the same between two, but there are a couple subtle differences that sort of uh, affect the two different ones. So I'm going to start over here with the airplane. So this is a side view of an airplane. And generally on an airplane, you've got thrust from the engines or the propeller. You've got the velocity vector. So this is the direction that the vehicle is traveling. The, typically, the, uh, the nose of the aircraft, the, where the nose of the aircraft is pointing, and the angle between that vector and the velocity vector is called uh, alpha, or the angle of attack. If you take that velocity vector and do a uh, collinear or parallel vector out the back like this, this is called drag, perpendicular to that is called lift, and then going straight down is weight. Okay? So you've got thrust, drag, lift, and weight. Okay? Thrust is typically computed from engine performance data. Weight is computed by mass times gravity, so you just have to weigh the vehicle. Lift and drag, though, you need to understand the aerodynamics of it. So typically for an aircraft, you've got this term out front that's called the dynamic pressure. And it's one half the density of the air times V squared. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to increase quadratically with the, uh, how fast you're going. This S term here is going to be a reference area, so that's typically how big your wing is. It's like the, the area of your wings. So if you have bigger wings, you get more lift, but you're also going to get more drag. These aerodynamic coefficients, CL and CD, these aerodynamic coefficients, they basically scale with S. They also scale with Reynolds number, so you also have to keep in mind Reynolds number. So Reynolds number is the density of the air times the velocity times a reference length. C is typically the chord length of your airplane and then mu, which is the viscosity of the air. So if you keep the Reynolds number constant and the shape of the wing constant, you can actually uh, get aerodynamic coefficients in a wind tunnel where you scale the whole thing down, but you keep the Reynolds number constant. And you can actually get these aerodynamic coefficients so that you don't need to build a full-size aircraft. You can build a smaller scale model, get the aerodynamic coefficients into the smaller scale model, and then scale up the aircraft, and then you can just uh, change the reference area and the dynamic pressure, and you'll know the lift and drag. So that's the beauty of those aerodynamic coefficients. Uh, typically, aerodynamic coefficients look like this. So the lift curve slope looks like this, where angle attack is on the x-axis, lift is on the y-axis. The slope of this is typically called CL alpha, which is the lift curve slope, and where it crosses the um, uh, y-axis is called the zero angle, z z zero angle of attack co lift coefficient. So it basically means if you're flying level or if you're taking off, how much, li how much lift are you going you to get? So if you have a symmetric airfoil, you're not going to get any lift, but typically you have like cambered airfoils, right? So like um, this, this aircraft over here, uh, I don't know if you can see in the video, but see how this has, yeah, this has a little bit of curvature right there. And so this would be a cambered airfoil. So if I had the vehicle traveling like this, I would actually still get lift. I don't actually need to fly the vehicle like this to give me lift. I can fly it like this, and because the airfoil is cambered, um, I, can fly, I can fly the aircraft uh, in that kind of configuration. Uh, those two coefficients are typically grabbed from something called flat plate theory, which I'm not going to go over here in this video, or there are a lot of open source programs like XFOIL. If you have a CFD solver that you pay for or you wrote yourself, more power to you. Um, I think I have a video on XFOIL, so I'll try to link it in the description. Um, but XFOIL is a great tool to use. To, you can put in like any um, flat plate, or sorry, not flat plate, you can put in like any 2D uh, airfoil cross section and you can get lift and drag. Actually, I just remember there's a website I think called xfoiltools.com. I'll, 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 I'll make sure that that's correct. Um, in a, in a set after I post this video, but I'm pretty sure that's another website we can get these coefficients. Uh, drag uh, uh, essentially has the same kind of thing. When angle of attack is zero, you're going to have C naught. You're going to have some drag just from, from flying. And as you increase angle of attack, your drag actually goes up quadratically. So you have to be careful. You know, if you increase angle of attack, you are getting more lift, but you're also getting more drag. And so there's a trade off there. Okay. So that's everything for an aircraft. A rocket operates almost the same way with aerodynamic coefficients, but the terminology is a little bit different. So you have thrust from the rocket engine, and the angle that the velocity vector makes with thrust is called alpha, but instead of lift and drag, you have a normal force and an axial force called capital X and capital N. 
your dynamic pressure for those two are also different. For the normal coefficient, you have your CN, your aerodynamic, co your aerodynamic normal coefficient, but your dynamic pressure is pi over 8, density of the air, V squared, and then D squared. So instead of the reference area being S, your reference area is actually D. So this is actually like a reference uh, length here. And D squared, D squared then is your reference area because D is just the diameter of the rocket. So the, the, the bigger the diameter of the rocket, the more drag you're going to get. So you could take the same thing. You could put a rocket that is thinner, making sure you keep the Reynolds number constant in a wind tunnel and get the aerodynamic coefficients and then scale the rocket up and you'll be able to just multiply by that same aerodynamic coefficient. Again, here for the axial force, same dynamic pressure, same reference area. You just change the subscript CX. CN operates very similar to CL. The thing is, though, is that typically rockets are symmetric. So if the angle of attack of the rocket is zero, typically the normal force will be zero. So there is no CN zero. It's just CN alpha times alpha. So typically, if you look in like, a, like a proprietary software like Prodas or something, it'll, they'll just give you CN alpha. Or Open Rocket, they'll just give you CN alpha. Actually, I think Open Rocket just gives you CN. But I, I digress. Anyway, so then. Uh, axial is the same thing as CD, the drag coefficient on an airplane, except instead of it being CD naught, it's CX naught when alpha is zero. And then instead of it being CD alpha, CD alpha, it's CX2 and then alpha squared. And then there you go. And then these coefficients, um, rockets aren't, I guess, as popular in terms of getting lift and drag characteristics. They really operate on like mass margin and mass budget and propellant and like. Uh, it's really more the engine motor. I mean, you're, you're blowing something up, right? So it's like, it's more like how big the motor is. And so they put a lot of the emphasis on thrust and not necessarily on drag. But if you are modeling this on the computer, these coefficients are really important. Where do you get those coefficients? I think the Army Navy Finner is open source. Um, open Rocket can give you some equations. And actually, Open Rocket has a PDF documentation that accompanies it. And somewhere on the internet, I'll try and find it and link it or in the description below. But I think those are the, those are the basics. Um, if, you, if you've taken aerodynamics, believe it or not, if you've taken a six week course on 16 week course on aerodynamics, this is what I'd like you to walk away with. If you understand this one slide, then your, your 16 weeks of education paid off because this is really what I want you to be able to know and take with you to other classes. It also helps when you're uh, designing RC aircraft because if you want to make sure you can fly fast enough, you need to make sure you have enough thrust to overcome drag, and then you need to make sure you have enough lift to overcome weight. And if you can model all that and make sure that you're good to go, then your uh, airplane will fly really well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.